King of Kings, God of Lord of Lords. In you alone we put our trust. Amen. In you alone, if I say you alone, I put my trust. I trust you, Lord. I trust your word. I trust your leading. I trust your Holy Spirit. I want you to make me more like you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Have your way in this place tonight. Moved by the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your will be done, Lord, in my life, in this nation. Father, we lift up President Trump. In the name of Jesus, we lift up all those who are working for righteousness. Washington and wherever they are that are working for righteousness throughout the world, throughout the nation, the world, all the leaders, Lord, if they're working for righteousness, Father, if their hearts are after you, Father, if they want to see your kingdom established, Father, bless them, protect them, help them, Father, today, this night, Father, let your will be done, let your will be done, let your will be done, Lord Jesus.
Every place, every way, every place, every way, I triumph. 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 I tri
but she always causes me she always causes to, to triumph. To triumph.
restoration and restoration to your life, says the Lord. Restoration, in spite of what it looks like, dare to believe that I'm driving, says the Lord. And he's driving. Restoration, your prayers have come up to my throne, says the Lord. Your prayers from every direction, every city, every town, every nation have come up before my throne. Direction, direction. I'm giving you new direction. I'm giving you new deliverance. I'm giving you new protection. I'm giving you new restoration, says the Lord. The angels are around about you. The angels are around about you. Give you all that I promise you. So rejoice. Rejoice ahead of time. Rejoice. All those things which be not as if they were.
the good father. I am the good father. Yeah. 
The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. And you did not receive the spirit of religious duty, leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Yes. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance, yes. enfolding you into the family of God. And you will never feel orphaned, for as He rises up within us, our spirits join Him in saying the words of tender affection, Beloved Father. For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as He whispers into our innermost being, You are God's beloved child. And since we are His true children, we qualify to share all His treasures, for indeed, we are heirs of God Himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that He is and all that He has. We will experience being co-glorified with Him, provided that we accept His sufferings as our own. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Who's next? So the Lord gave me this word that we are in revival. Amen. That I heard this today on the radio that after people have been in revival a while, they didn't realize it until they looked back at it. And I don't know about you, but this year has been amazing. You know, we put our faith in God and He, he comes through. I've seen more healings, more salvations, than I've ever seen in my life. And if you say to yourself, well, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing all those wonderful things. My year has been terrible. My year has been this or that. Then I feel like I sense that the Lord is wanting to give you a loving correction. It comes out of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 through 14 in the Amplified. It's, I entitled this, Meat, Milk, and Obedience. Concerning this, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull and sluggish in your spiritual hearing and disciplined to listen. For though by this time you ought to be teachers because of the time you have had to learn these truths, you actually need someone to teach you again the elementary principles of God's word from the beginning, and you have come to be continually in need of milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is doctrinally inexperienced and unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a spiritual infant. But solid food is for the spiritually mature, whose senses are trained by practice to distinguish between what is morally good and what is evil. You know, there came a time in my life where, you know, God got a hold of me and he saved me. And I did a lot of rug time. I don't know, some of you might know what that means, where where I didn't know much, but God just showed up and let me know He was real. But, you know, I love those times, but He wants obedience. We have to be obedient to do what He's called us to do. Be saved, be baptized, be filled with His Spirit. And then He says this simple thing, Go ye into all the world and share the good news. It's when we do that, step out of the boat, then we see God show up in this in a mighty way. He'll, he'll never let us down. He's, he promises He'll never let us down. But we must be bold and courageous like Joshua and Caleb. We can take the land. Yes. So be obedient. We, can, we, we share the good news. We lay hands on the sick. We, we speak the truth in love and, it, and it bring, the truth will set people free. Hallelujah. 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 So, hallelujah. We are in revival, the Lord says. Amen. So, we have to grow up, though. Be obedient to do what He's told us to do. And, and we'll see the, see the hand of God move in your life. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah.
Phil, did you want to say anything about what you shared? Yeah, say anything about it? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the Word of God. What do I need? Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I can't improve on that argument. <laughs> oh, I know. I thought maybe God spoke something of it to you that you. No, it's just. The only thing he's telling me is know who you are. Know who you are in him. If you don't know who you are, and I've been that way most of my life. Not knowing. And like that verse said, it just believing that you're never quite good enough. You aren't. But in Him you are. (laughs) (laughs) What a good word. (laughs) None of us are. Nobody's good enough. But you're worthy because He thinks you're worthy. That's That's why He died for us. I didn't hear from some ladies to speak to ladies. Come up here, some ladies, and say something. Hi, Sam. Hallelujah. Well, first of all, I'd like to say I was healed today. This is Mickey. Oh, this is, yeah, my name is Mickey. I was healed today from my ears. I could not hear in either ear at church this morning. Uh, people prayed for me, and God came and healed me. Oh, my ears. I think it was a spiritual attack. Amen. Uh, the enemy just trying to not hear his voice. But he did not win. So what can you tell people out there that are going through something? God hears. God hears, but I also want to read something that my son wrote that I think is... Make sure you're in here. All right, so one of the names for Holy Spirit is Comforter. His name is Comforter, so we can walk in the uncomfortable things He wants us to. In other words, Jesus was saying, you will be uncomfortable when you follow me, so I'm going to send the Comforter. You're going to need encouragement, so I'm going to send the Encourager. You're going to need help, so I'm going to send Helper. Just like we needed redeemed and saved, healed, and we have a Redeemer, a Savior, and a Healer. He told Moses his name was I Am. I am everything you need me to be and even everything you don't know you need. You're going to need raised from the dead, so he gave us the same resurrection power that raised Christ from the grave. You're going to need real love, so he gave us the beloved. So every time he thinks of us, which is all the time, he speaks to us, the beloved. Be loved. Notice the first thing he spoke was, let there be light and be light. He is telling you who you are by speaking to you, who he is in you, for you, and what he wants to do through you. Amen. 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 I just want to say, thank you, Phil. I mean, I think what was happening to me today with my ears, uh, I think the Lord is calling me. Closer, he's telling me to get rid of some distractions, and he told me to give up my dog, which is kind of hard today, but I did. But I felt like he said, I don't want your dog to be a distraction, and he's to be between him and me. So he's going to show me things that. I don't think I've been clearly hearing. So, and I've been fighting some depression and feeling alone, but uh, God is here. Amen. God is here with me. I am not alone, even though it looks like it in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but His Spirit is with me, the Comforter, like Amen. my son said, is here. Amen. So, I believe I'm going to be a deep walk with God. Yeah. Amen. Mickey, and Holy Spirit, I comfort her. Mickey, stand in the middle. Go stand in the middle. Ladies, stand up. Jump. 
Hallelujah. Y'all should not turn me into prayer. Begin to pray. supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered to discover what every Holy One experiences, the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is His love. How enduring and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you. 
and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church and every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. Amen. Again, it's just realizing who we are. We're so much more than we think. I heard one guy say, you're not who you think you are. Oh, that's right. And you're not who you think God thinks you are. You're who God says you are.
I don't know who I'm talking to here, and I might be talking, and I might be talking to all of us right now. You just have to move down to this tight. It's okay. <laughs> uh, we're in Haggai, obviously. You're fine. We're in Haggai. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And if you're not in some kind of battle, honey, you ain't in a fight. Come on. Uh, we're going to win this. We are. But we're not going to win it by our strength and power. Amen. We're not going to win it by our wisdom. Amen. We might be at that Red Sea moment. Yes. But now is not the time to be saying, let's go back to Egypt. No. Oh, no. Lord. <sighs> Moses went back up to pray and the Lord said what are you doing here lead the people across we're going across Amen. now we've known for a couple of years that this was going to happen and we've had time to prepare and I heard somebody say tonight well if you're not prepared there's nothing I can do now to prepare you well that's not true that is just not true. That's right. If you have to fast now, fast and pray. Fast and pray together. Don't just fast and don't just pray, but fast and pray together. Seek the face of the Most High God because He's seeking our faces. Amen. And we will win the battle over witchcraft. We will win the battle over Jezebel and Jehu, she's going right over the wall. Amen. Now I looked up, I looked up that, that, that battle and it lasted about a year. It lasted about a year. And I don't want to be like Elijah and go hide in the cave. Because right. even the Lord had to say, what are you doing here? I've got so many that have not bowed a knee. And I know who I'm talking to right now. I know who I'm talking to. You will win this battle. I'm looking right at you. You will, you will win this battle. There's a spirit of witchcraft that's come against that tribe. And you just may have to be that Jehu. Praise but Amen. Father, we're coming. To, we're coming to the giants. In the, boy, I'm all over the Bible tonight. <laughs> we're coming in the name of Jesus. Amen. And if they and if they bring other giants with them, we're just going to grab our brothers and we're going to go back and defeat those two. Amen. And I'm saying amen and amen. I'm looking at a group of warriors here. I'm looking at a group of people who have fought more battles and won more victories anybody I've seen in my life. We're not baby Christians in here. We're not. We are people who are seasoned warriors. We have fought, this may be the biggest battle of our lives, but, when, but as, we walk, as we go through, reach back and grab somebody else and bring them through with you. Amen. Because as the Josephs, I really am all over the Bible tonight, as the Josephs in your families, your families will be made whole. Your families will be saved. Amen. As we come out of these prisons, they are going, God, oh my Lord, heaven, God is going to work miracles. Amen. Miracles and more miracles. Amen. Yes. Stop worrying about your kids. Stop worrying about your families. They're on their way. Yes. That's right. They're, they're on their way. That's right. They're on yes. their way. Yes. He said he's yes. saved everyone in our household and he's going to do it. Yes. That's right. He's You're going right. to do it. He, you know, if, if he could lie, we might be able to say, well, Lord, you lied. But he did. But he can. <laughs> you know, he can do everything but lie. Amen. He can't. If he said he's going to do something, by golly, he's going to do it. That's right. So just hold on and cross over. And we're going to praise the Lord all the way around. Amen. And, and we will go around that wall with the shout. And that was a great big wall. We might be quiet for a few days. Really, I'm all over the Bible tonight. But, but 
<laughs> the shout did bring the shout did bring down the walls of that city. And we're taking it to Jericho. Amen. 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 Anybody else? You know, I felt like the Lord said tonight was a believer's meeting before we ever started. I want to confirm that where we're at right now is just like the children of Israel were standing there and they had no place to go and they thought they were doomed and Moses lifted up the, his rod and it split the waters God split the waters and they walked through on dry land and that's us right now that's us where we're at right now we're going to walk across just like she said just like Virginia said we're going to walk across to the other side Amen. We're, we're victorious. We're going to dance and sing and rejoice because God has already won the victory for us. Amen. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And they found those artifacts. Yes. Okay. Kathy, do you have anything? No. Oh. About her? I know a lot of probably can produce anytime she needs to. <laughs> <laughs> you have some come up. You don't know what it is, you come up here. She's a flowing stream. There's a bunch of people that are. And what God wants you to open your mouths these days. People are looking. And they're listening. And they're going, where's my help? Whatever God gives you. Well, I am so grateful. What do you need to do? Okay. This is going to... I'm so I'm grateful for the peace that we've had as a body when, as we've been walking through where we've been walking. And I am also thankful for the unity that I have seen across the board yeah. with the people of God. I have been on prayer calls that are just amazing. And what must that sound like to God when it sounds so good to me? How must he hear it? Amen. So I'm encouraged for many reasons. Just in general, I'm encouraged. But... Mickey made me think of something that crossed my mind, so I'm up here, somebody's going to say it, right? Because you said, and why are we ringing? Is it my fault? Am I doing that? Okay. Um, you guys hearing me? I'm not hearing me. I'm not hearing me. Maybe it's in my head. <laughs> um, you, you said that you, the Lord has let you get rid of your dog for reasons between you and the Lord. Well, I went to something similar. Am I too loud? No, be loud. Be loud. Um, but there was a time for me a couple of years ago, I went through this real um, sudden life event and ended up in unfamiliar territory. Just And I got a dog. <laughs> the, it was really my daughter's doings, but she was born November the 22nd. This happened September the 21st, so a couple of months later, right? I didn't get her till right after Christmas. Well, um, she was such a blessing, you know, at, at least I wasn't so alone, and I so appreciate it. But during this walk where I was at, and I have known the Lord. I was, I was born assembly of God, I do believe. I mean, you know, so they tell me, I don't remember not going to church. So this isn't anything new to me. But when I started walking where I started walking, I had this, I wanted to just change everything. And I wanted to kick up my prayer walk, my prayer life. I needed to do something to kick it up. What could I do? So I started doing all of this research and all of these, you know, YouTube turned out to be a blessing to me during that time. And anybody else I could get my hands on. So uh, I was doing that and turns out this little, Pentecostal puppy of mine, that's what she turned out to be. Well, she didn't have her flesh under her paws, and she had her first few months was, was pretty, she's mean, she's mean. And she would just snap and bite, and I had to keep band-aids on my shopping list. And so I got her in uh, no, November, let me see, she's born November, I got her in January. So by September, uh, I was still... Uh, Fighting for every breath I was getting, but I was getting my, uh, I was really focusing on my prayer walk, my prayer life. And one day I was walking past her, she was all cuddled up, really cute, and I just, all I did was pet her. And that dog bit me. I mean, she, it was this middle finger. 
and I showed her, showed it to her. <laughs> <Many times. laughs> yeah, but there's still a scar on it. I do cherish the scar now because it was the last time she bit me. But but it hurt so bad. It bled so much, and I was having a really bad day. It was a really bad day, and I got in bed. I covered myself up because she felt bad. It turns out she had a tree under her and her, you know, her her snout and treats don't mix, don't get near her. She's got a tree. I didn't realize there's a she was hiding a tree. But that was no excuse. So um, I covered myself up with my blankets and I wouldn't let her, her comfort me because I was crying. And she was all worried about it. So I wouldn't let her. So I started talking to the Lord and I said, God, this ain't right. This is just wrong. I said, I am so alone. And this is what I wanted to say. I'm so alone. And all you've given me is a dog that bites. And it's wrong. It's just wrong. And I said, what you're doing, and I, here's what I said. I said, what you are doing is asking me to do something you didn't want to do. That's why you made me. Because you didn't want to be alone. You wanted fellowship. It's just wrong. And I heard myself say that, and I just kind of backed off a little bit. It, uh, I, I, I was amused at myself for saying it. And then all of a sudden, all the lights went off, and it, I got up, and I, I checked to see if everybody else was off, and they were. So I sat down in my recliner, and I turned on my favorite preacher. And I, I just sat there and didn't care when the lights would come back on, when the electricity would come back on, my battery of my phone, I just... I sat there and listened, and I could feel as the Lord began to be the lift of my head, just as I listened to the Word. So, this was in September, and it continually, um, it was continually on my mind that I said that to the Lord. That I said, even you didn't want to do what you're asking me to do. You're asking me to be so. So, I, I would continually just ponder me saying that, and it was uh, Thanksgiving. I was in Nashville at my daughter's house, and it was on my mind again, and it suddenly dawned on me. And as it did, I said, okay, well played. Well played, God. Because his whole point of suddenly sucking every bit of life out of my life, except for a dog that bit was so he could have me to himself. And what it did was get me determined to press into my walk with him, my prayer life, and that was what he wanted to accomplish all along anyway, was to teach me how to let him be my everything, everything. And Molly never met me again. She got saved. (laughs) Amen. <laughs> now my Pentecostal <laughs> puppy. I'm sure it was just the puppy's day, but she's my Pentecostal puppy. Don't know what I'd do without her, but I don't know what I'd do without the Lord either. Amen. So I am so thankful that I slowly walked through these stages and I couldn't have gone there any other way except the path I've taken. And that's just where we're at as a body and as believers and as a church. Wherever we're going, we're not going to get there except we t- take the path that we're on. There's not any detours. There's not any alternate routes. We've got to take the path we're on and put one foot in front of the other. And we know, we know who's in control. So we've just got to let him drive. Like God Amen. said, yes. we've got to let him drive. Yes. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord for it. Now, I don't know where he went to. <laughs> but we've lost him. <laughs> So, okay, right. here we go. So, my name's John. I didn't say that earlier, but I uh, Googled. I should have duck, duck, go, but uh, yeah, I Googled. Yeah. It came out good anyway. <laughs> and uh, what was the, valley, the Battle of Valley Forge? The six-month encampment of General George Washington's Continental Army at Valley Forge in the winter of 1777 and 78 was a major turning point in the American Revolutionary War. The defeats had led some members of the Continental Congress 
to want to replace General George Washington, for they were believing that he was incompetent. Now, isn't that amazing? Not trying to get too political here, you know, I'm just talking about General George Washington and the great things that he fought for, racism, uh, slavery, and yet they believed that he was incompetent. Hmm. Does that sound familiar, doesn't it? Connect the dots. You know, we're all going through things in life. We all have family members uh, that are struggling, that we're believing God for. And uh, But, you know, doesn't the Bible tell us that it will be father or son against father and mother against mo uh, daughter against mother and, and all these things that uh, we will go through these things so you know if we set our hearts on, on God and uh, just in faith believe you know it just takes all the pressure off uh, I rejoice I, I praise and, and thank God for uh, you know I, I had an older brother that I could never talk to God about and for 20, 25 years, you know, I was pleading the blood of Jesus over my brother. Well, he passed away this year, and I had the opportunity to lead him to the Lord uh, on his deathbed. He, uh, I led him to the Lord, and he passed away two hours later. So, But I've been believing God all that time. And, you know, I've learned not to fret, not to be anxious. He said, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Amen. So, you know, all that anxiety that I had all those years, you know, God said he would take care of him. You know, that I pled the blood of Jesus over him and that God would give me the opportunity, and he did. So just keep the faith. You know, every, every Bible story is when they were up against the Red Sea, God came through. Uh, in the midnight hour, what happened? They praised God in the midst of their, their where they were in prison, and uh, God opened the doors and, and uh, did miraculous things, saved the jailers and, and all their family. So um, just keep the faith. Uh, keep keep hanging in there. Um, I could read one last scripture. It's in James 1. Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials. Be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking in nothing. Amen. That's the Amplified. Yeah. That's so, good. Amen. That's good. Praise God. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hallelujah. That's good. You know, we're supposed to love one another. Amen. Mm -hmm. I told you. I know. Yeah, somebody told me that. I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> what are you gonna do, you know? That's what he said in New York. <laughs> what you gotta do, you know? Hey. We're supposed to love each other. Hey. Yes, amen. And it's not supposed to matter what the name of the door is. Mm. If we're a Christian, we're a Christian. Amen. It means Christ like, right? Amen. Love is not always nice. <laughs> when Jesus took the whip and drove them out of the yeah. uh, temp temple. <coughs> He loved them. He loved them. He was trying to tell them, though, this doesn't work with my father. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. This is a house of prayer is what he said about that. And yet he took a whip. Well, who would think, I mean, that would be considered abuse today. Right? Mm -hmm. well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, amen. Yes. Yes. Get your Bible turned to uh, Romans 12 real quick. I'm just going to share a little bit with you and we're about done. He just gave me a couple of things to share with you. <clears throat> right now is the time of prayer. Now is the time to be praying in the Spirit a lot. Amen? Mm -hmm. Time to pray in the Spirit a lot. Because when you pray in the Spirit, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. You notice that 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, they're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, but they're also talking about love. Right. Because the greatest of everything is the love of God. Mm -hmm. Right? So in verse chapter 12, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. John, you talked about that. It's time to be obedient to God. Present our bodies 
We're not supposed to be ruled by our senses. We're supposed to be ruled by the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God always leads us to walk in love, even at the expense of ourselves at times, right? Does that mean that you won't tell someone the truth? No, because telling the truth is walking in love. Amen. But people many times think that's hate speech. Today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that true? It's they got the devils. Yes. Well, you know, it's pretty simple to tell. If somebody's really being sweet, but they're telling the word, and somebody else is reacting, there's a demonic problem going on. Yep. Gotcha. It's black and white. It's really not that hard yep. to figure out. So, I'm going to move over just a little bit here. <clears throat> it says, I beseech you, like Paul saying, Please, please, I beseech you, please present your body to the Lord. Let him work through you. Let him live through you. You know, part of laying down your life is giving your life to Jesus so he can live his perfect will through us. Amen? Amen. Laying down your life means I don't live just for myself anymore when we're saved. We say, God, what do you want? Every day we say, God, what do you want? What are we going to do for the kingdom of God? Some people are called to business, you guys. And they're called to be mighty in business. Some people are called to be a lawyer, a doctor, a, a shoemaker, a, whatever they're called to do. Um, an entrepreneur, a real estate person. It doesn't matter what you're called to. It's whether within the call, you always let Jesus be your senior partner. Amen. That's true. Amen? Amen. Always let him be final say. He's final say. Holy Spirit's final say. Amen. Because Holy Spirit's with you. Jesus, of course, is sit sitting at the right hand of God in heaven, the Bible says. Or he's walking around in heaven or whatever. But And the Father is on the throne. But the Holy Spirit's here. And he's going to lead you. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 that those that are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Son of God. Sons or sons and daughters, but they're sons of God. Wow. If we're led by the Spirit, now the Spirit of God will never lead you outside of the Word, no matter what Come you on. think, and if they, you think you know better, there are people out there that say, well, I'm out beyond the Bible. Yes, you sure are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they really are. Yeah. Well, I don't need that thing anymore. I've got the Spirit of God. No, you need the Spirit of God, and you need the Word of God, because the Word will keep you within the boundaries of Come what on. is really the truth. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the truth and, and I am the life. But He's the truth. He said, another, the disciples said to Him, where would we go, Lord? Your Word is truth. You know, Jesus said, I'm the truth. Right. If it doesn't line up with Jesus and what he showed us in some fashion, usually you can find two or three scriptures that will agree right. on something that is doctrine. And if you don't have that, we know this, I say this a lot, but if you can't find two or three scriptures, you don't have truth. You don't have God's word. You've got to have two or three things that say the same thing, and you can put your plant your feet down on the ground and stand on it. So here it says, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That means every day you get up and you say, Lord, what are we doing today? What's our adventure today? Come on. Everybody say this to me. Father, Father what's my adventure with you today? What's my adventure with you today? today? Who are we going to run into? Who are we going to run into? Who's going to run into us? And get the devils cast out of them. And get the devils cast out of them. And get the sick healed, Lord. And get the sick healed. Amen. What's going to happen today, right? Amen. Who's going to get saved? Who's going to give their heart to you today, Lord? Even though you're all about your business, you should also be all about his business. Amen. Because if you're about his business, he'll take care of your business. He'll prosper in your business. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> present your body a living sacrifice. Holy means separated. Holy means separated unto him. The God's word holy God's means separated. separated. We make it some woo woo thing, but it's yeah. not, it's separation. Right. Holiness means separation unto the Lord. That means He's first place. He's my final say. Come on. He's the one that directs my path. I don't yeah. listen to everything else. The Bible says it's not wise to listen to the counsel of the ungodly. ungodly. It's not wise to listen to them. That's right. Garbage. Right. Garbage in, garbage out. If, if the devil's still distracting you this week, tell him to shut up. 
and listen to God in His Word. Okay, so then it says, not only holy, but acceptable unto God. Present your body, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. But reasonable in the original language means your spiritual service. That's right. So your spiritual service is to present your flesh so that it doesn't serve Satan in the world. Remember Bob Dylan? Yeah. Yeah. He said you got to serve somebody. Serve somebody, serve somebody, right? He wrote that song on a yeah. man named Al Cash's couch in Hollywood um, uh, as he was sitting there. That's right. Very interesting. We got to go to that Bible study a lot in Hollywood. So, anyways, it says, and be not, not only present your body, which is your spiritual service, but do not be. Does that sound like a command? Yes. Sir. Do not be or be not. That's a command, right? That's right. Be not conformed to this world. The Pepsi generation. No, the Jesus generation. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye. Transformed. What's transformed? New. new. A new creature with a new feature. New creature with a new feature. It means changed, right? Hallelujah. From the inside out. Because you get changed in your spirit, then soul, then body. Right. Okay? But be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That means changed. Metamorphosi, metamorphosi or something like that. Uh, be changed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. What are you renewing your mind to? Your word. Your word. You take his mind, which is his word, yes, 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 and you yes, yes, yes. get it in your mind. Word. And you start thinking his thoughts instead of your stinking thinking. Yeah, stinking um, thinking flesh. The old stuff that doesn't produce life, right? Mm -hmm. So that you so that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. And you want his perfect will. Amen. Not just his good, not, not just his acceptable, but you want his perfect, perfect will. will. Yes. How are you gonna get there? Present your body and renew your mind. Amen. Come on. Well, what are you remind renewing your mind to? Who you are in Christ. Amen. I mean, I'm just repeating what was said all through this meeting already. Hallelujah. Isn't that interesting? Because I was going to teach something else, and the Lord just gave me this two minutes ago. What to share. Amen. But it's coming out all over the place. You guys already said it. Nate, you didn't say anything yet. You must be safe for last. <laughs> Hallelujah. The best is safe for last. Hallelujah. So, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove something. Who are you proving it to? The world. The devil. The devil. And the world and the flesh. You may prove mm -hmm. God's perfect, acceptable, perfect, and good will of God. Okay. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But I want you to, t to know something. Some people think Christians are arrogant. Because they know who they are now in Christ. And they say, well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You're really arrogant. No. I'm not arrogant. That's humility. Right. Humility is having an accurate opinion of what you are. That's right. Who you are. Right. Accuracy of who you are. Humility is not saying, I'm just an old worm that's just barely getting by down on yeah. Broke Street. You know, with nothing and no hope and no love and no life. And man, I don't have any. Oh, I know somebody always says, I don't have any social life. Well, don't say that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, we're not supposed to think of ourselves though, more highly than we ought to think. But how are we supposed to think of ourselves? The word. Just like Jesus. Do you know the Bible says all things are yours? The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. About the believer. That's pretty high, you guys. That's right. I can do all things through Christ. I'm immune to certain sicknesses and diseases. All. Oh, all. All. Where do you get that from? The Word. The Word. All you have to do is shout back Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. That's right. Every sickness and every disease, whether it's written in the book of the law or not, is under the curse. Right and Galatians says, Christ has redeemed you from the curse. He made a curse for you that the blessing of Abraham might come upon you. And if you're Abraham's seed, your heirs according to the promise. And the promises belong to you and the curses don't. That's right. Right? So you, everybody say, I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am redeemed then from sickness, poverty, poverty, everything. It's all it's all in Deuteronomy twenty eight chapter uh, chapter twenty eight verse fifteen through the end of the chapter tells us all of the junk of the curse of the law. That's right. And you're redeemed from that. If it tries to get on you, you need to run it off of you. If it tries to get on your family, run it off. If it tries to get on you, you have authority. Jesus gave us the authority when he left. He gave it to the church. He said, now you go, therefore, you cast out devils, you raise the dead, you heal the sick, you do this, you do that. Go into all the world, preach, and I'll confirm what you preach. Amen. And teach. John G. Lake was so strong in this that when they put bubonic plague on his hand, they came in the saliva of people that had died. It died instantly in his hand. We're all supposed to have that kind of faith. That's not a special faith. That's the faith that all believers should be walking in. The devil doesn't want you to have that, but it belongs to you. It doesn't matter what he wants. You better be quiet, he might hear you. I don't care. He's a liar. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for I say that the grace given unto me to every man, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly. You know what the way to think soberly about yourself is? Who are you in Christ? Right. What does the Bible say you are? I'm redeemed. I'm healed. Doesn't it say I'm you're wrong. healed? Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 53, 4 says you are healed. You were healed. No, Isaiah 53, 4 says, you are. Looking back in 1 Peter, at the cross, it says, you were healed. That, that helps us remember that. We're looking back from Peter, 2 Peter. Yeah, 1 Peter, uh, 5, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, you don't have no cares. Cast all your cares on the Lord and leave them there. You don't have them unless you choose them. What? Quit picking them up. up Quit picking them up. That's right. Don't lay them down. Pick them up. Okay, so, for I say to you through the grace given to me, and then it says, according as, as God has dealt to every man, the measure of faith in the Dates Bible, it says for the word measure, 12,000 gallons. That's right. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. To every man, it's given the measure of faith. A measure was 12,000 mm-hmm. gallons. Yeah. You, you say, I have no faith. Well, yes, you do. Faith. You, have 12, gallons, you have at least 12,000 gallons unless you <laughs> sunk it. Hallelujah. Got a hole in it. How do you build up yourself? You exercise your faith. Exercise your faith. Amen. How else do you do it? Like hearing the word. Hearing, the word hearing faith comes by. Hearing, hearing. You know, it says faith cometh, but that also means it develops. Yeah. It gets bigger. Faith yeah. cometh. Yes. Let's what, no, getting, what name? No, uh, no pain. I, I disagree with you. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, agree strong. Come right here and hear by the word of God. Amen. No pain. I like it when you guys make noise because I'm used to the black church. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. So anyway. <laughs> but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. He's yeah. dealt to everybody faith. Mm-hmm. Now he is talking here to the Roman okay. church. Okay. So... So everybody has faith, though. But the negative side of faith is fear. unbelief or fear. fear faith is belief, right? right. Faith is belief. Right. Yeah. So the other side of it is unbelief. But fear will bring about unbelief if, you're, right. if you give in to it. That's right. Amen. So, so it says, For I say through the grace given, and then it goes down to verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, this is what God wanted me to share with you, especially right here. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Come on. Now God says there are offices in the in the ministry. Right. There's offices in the body of Christ. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, helps, um, all kinds of different ministry giftings or offices, you know, like the president of the United States is an office. We're supposed to respect that office. Yeah, amen. That's right. Some men or women who would try to stand in that office are not respectful. And others are. But we respect the office. That's why God says, pray for your leaders. That's right. It doesn't say whether they're good or bad. It says, pray for them. That's right. I wish that men would pray 
for, for them. Because if we do, then God can move. Mm-hmm. You, you say, what do you mean God can move if you pray? It seems as if, uh, I think John Wesley said, it's as if God can't move unless somebody prays. Right. An illegal right to because he gave us authority. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't, we have a human body. Only people with a human body have the right to operate down here. Very interesting. The glory of God was on Adam and Eve before they fell. And then they lost the glory of God, so they were no longer clothed. They were clothed in the glory. That's right. But then they lost the glory of God, and then then mankind was given authority, but he sold it out. So now we have it again. The church has it. Most do. person is born again. They have it whether they walk in it or not. Right? Amen? For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ, and every one member is one of another. I don't want somebody else's thing. I only want to do what I'm supposed to do the best that I can do it. And we should all want that. When we're young, we get jealous, we get this, we get that. If, If we're really young and immature... You know, we think, well, how come they're promoted and I'm not? How come this? How come that? How can they do this and I can't do that? Well, don't you have to work for so many years in order to get that? No, not if it's a gift from the Lord. You don't. Come on. But here it says everybody's given their own part. Right. And if we would walk in love with one another, then our own parts would flourish. The body of Christ would be healthy, I believe, if they walk in knowledge of the Lord and love. Because when we walk outside of love, the devil has a right to hit us. Right. If we walk outside of love, Satan can hit us. If we walk in love, we can go anywhere, do anything God tells us to do, and we'll be fine. Even if the devil tries to take us out, we'll stand up again, just like Bill Henderson. He got hit by a car on a bicycle. Trying to run him down. Ran him over. Ran the bicycle over. And he's laying on the ground and remembers that Copeland had said... You can praise your way out of anything. So he started to praise the Lord as he came to. And all his bones started popping back into place. And he got up off the ground and walked away with his bike over his shoulder. How can that be? Because no weapon formed against you will prosper. prosper. No weapon formed against you will prosper. So we don't want to be where open season can hit us. We want to walk in love. You see, that's the secret place. Walking in love is the secret place. You might say, well, they'll just have to put up with me. This is the way I am. Well, you better be careful. You better be careful. That's not always true. If you're saying that this is just the way I am and you're not kind and you're not whatever, you're walk- not walking in love. we got to walk in love. So, so we don't have open season on us. Because you can walk out from God's grace. Right. So, so, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy. That's called a supernatural gift. A supernatural gift. Prophecy. Even though you speak out of your mouth in English or the language you know, it's prophecy because it's prompted by the Holy Spirit. Then it says, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. There's some prophets that prophesy about the nations. There's some prophets that prophesy um, just things here on earth. And there's everybody can prophesy and not be a prophet necessarily because a prophet has three, two of the revelation gifts plus prophecy all the time. But everybody can prophesy because the Bible says they can. What is prophecy? It means speaking under the inspiration of God to somebody. To edify, exhort, and comfort them. To build them up. To exhort them. Challenge them. But to comfort them. And always when God speaks, it could be a severe hard word, but it will pick you up if you'll do what He's saying. It will help you and bless you. So, or ministry. The word ministry there is also, it's from diakonos. It means serve. It means servants. Like Kathy, she's a server. She looks around when she's in a place. I watch her sometimes. She doesn't know it. And she's looking at, well, how can I fix those flowers over there? And how can I fix their house and make it look better? How can I do this? That's a server gift. They look around because they they have this server thing in them. 
They can't hardly help it. They want to serve. They want to make things. That's how they make things better. And then you have the teacher. The teacher is the person who digs in the word deep. They want to tear apart every word. They love word studies. And then you have the exhorter. And the exhorter tells stories like Mike. <laughs> Mike's an exhorter. I don't know if you know that. But if you're a storyteller, you're an exhorter usually. Exhorters tell stories, but they bring the word into it. Hallelujah. And then those that give. Do you know there's a ministry gift of giving? Yep. It's giving in all kinds of ways. And you know what thrills a giver? For nobody to know where it came from. And they're usually really thrifty people. But boy, do they get blessed when they can give to a need that nobody knew about and God speaks to them and they give to it and they watch how much it helps somebody. But they won't say a word a lot of times. They just give. They're givers. That doesn't mean the whole body of Christ shouldn't be givers. There's a church in Hollywood where we were and one of the things they said about their church was they would be a generous church. I believe all churches ought to be that way. Amen. They ought to be generous because that's the love of God flowing to people yeah. all around Amen. them. Hallelujah. So then it says, and he that gives, let him do it with simplicity. Don't make a big fanfare. Just do it. He that rules. Now here's another part of the body of Christ. There are people that can rule. They can bring order to something. They can administrate. They can cause things to be in perfect order. Often people have more than one gift, you know. You know, I can lead to some degree, but if I don't have a team of rulers, I'm in trouble. Because rulers, they just have it. They, they're, they are authority. They don't have to try to be. They've got authority. They're amazing. So, and he that shows mercy, show it with cheerfulness. Virginia, she's cheerful, isn't she? Man. Okay. Cheerfulness, the mercy gift. Of course, mercy has an end on it. Do you know that? When mercy comes to its end, there's no getting up from it. There's an end on mercy, which you wouldn't know unless God draws the line. Mickey, are you that? Are you mercy? No, you're more, you're more cut and dry. <laughs> it's this way. Give me that sword. <laughs> That's more like the prophet gift. Throw those, you say you're done with your cigarettes, throw them on the ground and stomp on them. <laughs> that was Hallelujah. Funny <laughs> Hallelujah. And all of you have different gifts. Usually one is outstanding that God gave. There's seven, there's actually 21 gifts. Yep. There's nine gifts of the Spirit, there's nine motivational gifts, and there's nine ministry gifts. Very interesting. Um, so and then it says, let love be without dissimulation. What does that mean? Let love be without dissimulation. Who knows that one? Somebody look it up. Dissimulation in the Greek. Abhor that which is evil. Ask God to help you hate the things he hates. Ask God to help you hate what he hates. And cling or cleave to those things which are good. Right? Be kindly affection one to another. With brotherly love. Be kindly affectioned one to another with sisterly love. No, it says brotherly love, but that's because God uses the male, you know, but it refers to everyone. All of us should be Amen. doing our best. You know what some some people do? They have made a decision that they're going to try to outdo somebody else in how good they can be toward other people. Just like what I heard um, Kevin's that I say. He wants to pray in tongues more than Paul prayed in tongues because Paul said, I prayed in tongues more than all of you put together. <laughs> so he prays in tongues all the time, all the time, all the time. Okay, but well, we want to outdo each other in doing good works to one another. Okay? So be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Do you look around and see what need you can meet? Lord, is there something you want me to do? Is there something you want me to give? Because if the Lord says for something for you to do or to give, well, anything you do is giving. Did you know that? When you do something for somebody, that's right. giving. Because you're giving your time. Right. You're giving your effort. You're giving your energy. You're giving. You're giving. So um, when you do that, 
the Lord wants to, the reason he asks you to do things is so he can open you up for more blessing. Every time you give out, he wants to broaden your, what you can receive. He wants to make it bigger so you can receive more. You know, I heard this pastor, uh, some of you know who he is. I can't think of his name though right now, but you know him anyway. I mean, he's well known. And he used to be a financial man. And God began to deal with him when he was first in the ministry. Is Sid Roth? No, it's not Sid Roth. This guy is very good with finances, phenomenal with finances. Yes, so was Sid. <laughs> yes, he is, but this brother is a pastor. Oh, okay. And he has a huge ministry, church. His wife is blonde. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, well, oh. it'll come to me probably, but I don't have it at the moment. So, but the Lord came to him and said, I want you to give your salary this week. And he did it. And he, he had the Lord come to him the following week and said, I want you to give this. Now I want you to give this. Well, within a matter of months, the Lord started pouring finances onto him. And then he even came to the point where they were giving away a million dollars. Because God kept... It was about getting him to trust God. Each time it was stretching him out further. Getting him, doesn't it take that, doesn't it take you going through something often to get you to expand further? Where you trust God, you trust him a little more, you trust him a little more, you trust him a little more, and he says, do this. And so you do that. Kurt and Kathy have done this for years. They've given what God told them to give, and then God would supply almost in the same minute sometimes. God would turn around and just bless them. Gary Kesey? No. This is um, an o older man with um, gray Lamsey? hair. What is it? Dave Lamsey? Lamsey? No. No. Um, Robert Morris? Morris. It's kind of Robert Morris. Oh. Robert Morris. Was he a money guy? Oh, yeah. He was financial yeah. analyst or something before. He gives them. He gives away houses and cars yeah. and all kinds of yeah. things. Yeah, because he obeyed the Lord. You know what? Your Christianity ought to be an adventure. But if God can't get you to pull out there in an area that he's talking to you about, he can't bless you further. He wants to, but he's got to get you to work with him. So then it says here, let love be, anybody with dissimulation, let love be without dissimulation. Basically hypocrisy. Hypocrisy? Basically, yeah, that's, there's a whole lot of references here, but that's what, that's what ultimately in that context it would be. Can you give me an idea how that would work? Okay. Um, it comes from originally about like an actor. Like an actor? About uh, saying something. Basically, they're not saying something from their own motive. And, or somebody who says something. Like, for instance, um, uh, let's, let me read here. Uh, uh, Peter, uh, Galatians 2.13, Peter with other believing Jews and separating from from believing Gentiles of Antioch, pretended that the motive was loyalty to the law of Moses, whereas really it was fear of the Judaizers. Okay. And then so uh, then it kind of boils it down to uh, being. Uh, so so let it be love from the heart. You read in that Romans twelve, so it's twelve nine without dissimulation, without hypocrisy. Without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So then it says, "Be kindly affection one to another." What does that look like to somebody? That's vines. How would you be kindly affectionate to other people? Anybody? What, what does but that mean? Just pay attention to them. Pay attention to people? Yeah, I mean, most people, that's, they're, 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 they're starving for affection. Okay, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. In other words, be kind to people, right? In honor, prefer one another. What does that mean? In honor, prefer one another. Their, their uh, interests are above yours. Say again? Their interests are above yours. Yes. Their interests are above your interests. Yes. You don't pay attention to just yourself. Again, you see Kurt and Kathy, that, that's always been them. You don't want to do anything for anybody. Mike's been that way in his past life. Mm -hmm. Other people in his past life, you know, he's got that <laughs> <laughs> And Colleen. He was a good old boy. <laughs> and Colleen. She doesn't talk much, but she's a doer. Amen. So, um, it says, don't be slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, 
patient, in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them that do rejoice, weep with them that weep, and be of the same mind one toward another. That's what I wanted to get to. If you're of the same mind one to another, you're going to put other people first. There, there you come right down to do unto others, right? Before they do unto you. No. <laughs> do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's right? right. That's the golden rule. Do unto others. Treat them right. You know, sometimes I want to go slap somebody. Yeah. And I think, well, what would you want done to you in this case, Garth? You know, what do you want done? If you're in that situation. And God just pulls, the Bible says, the love of Christ compels you to let love go through you instead of let your own thing go through. Your own flesh try to get up and do what it wants to do. You don't let that happen. You just say, no, no, I'm going to let God come through you. Amen. Now, God can slap people. It says so in um, <laughs> uh, Proverbs 3, 7. In passion. 3 7 is the passion translation. It said, God will slap your enemies in the face. I like that. Oh, my goodness. I thought, we're like father, like son. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, so, um, so then it says this it says, uh, Rejoice in hope, be patient during tribulation, continue instant in prayer, distribute to the necessity of the saints. Oh, yeah, that's their job. That's not mine. No, that's all of our job. That's right? the pastor's job. Yeah, that's the pastor's job. We pay him. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Give to hospitality. Bless those which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Come on. Uh oh. Ouch. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and curse not. That's right. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. And as, if it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceably with everyone. Amen. Okay? So and it, it says, don't avenge yourself. Right? Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. If your enemy's hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. How? Love and life. Um, it says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Guilty. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Because good will overcome evil. That's right. Right? That's right. One lady said, there's another scripture that says um, uh, <clears throat> about being kind in the midst of tribulation. It's, it, it talks about you know, he coals of fire on their head. She said, well, I did that with my sorry husband. He's always beating on me. So I took my frying pan, and I put hot water in it one day, and I put it on the stove, and when he came in, I just dumped that thing all over him, and he said it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I started being kind to him, and it changed everything. <laughs> I hit him in the head with a frying pan. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Anybody here from Arkansas? Mm -mm. Well, I hear they can do things like that. Yeah, they do. Oh, my. I know some stories about Arkansas. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't Did you know that Arkansas is in the Bible? Yeah. Noah got out of the Arkansas? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, bless the Lord. Amen. So here's, here's what really the Lord wanted me to go across. <laughs> we each have our gifts, and God wants us to use them right That's now. That's right. Whatever he's put in you, look for ways to get the gospel to people. And often he'll come through your gift. Often he will come through whatever your gift is. And if you're in a situation where you can't really get out right now or something because of whatever's going on, pray. No preparation time is lost with the Lord. Pray. Amen. That's what I'd say. I want to encourage you that are in the body of Christ to call each other. I want to encourage you to talk to each other, those that are talkers, even if you just have a scripture for somebody, or write a note to somebody, or send them a card, or send them a letter. During this time, it's really, I think it would help a lot of people. Do you know that they're having a higher rate of suicide yes, right now than they are of COVID deaths? That's it. Is what I've heard. 
That's right. All across the world. Yeah, across right. the world. Yeah. Higher rates of suicide and extreme depression and stuff like that. It's time to reach out. Let the love of God come out of you. However he does that for you and through you. Let it Every day get up in the morning and say, God, what do you want me to do? Come on. What do you want to do through me? And he's going to do things through you. And it's going to encourage you. And it's right. going to bless you. And you're all going to come to your meetings, wherever you're going to church, whatever you're doing. You're all going to come with all kinds of testimonies. You know what happened? Oh, this happened. And and when I, when I went to take them this pie, I gave them a pie and they said, Oh, but I can't eat it because I'm this and I've got this problem in my gut. And you pray for them and they get healed. Then they can eat the pie. You know, or whatever. God just used that to get you there. And then they can eat the pie. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gar? Yes. I just want to encourage you. And Come up here. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to be in the microphone so that people can hear you. They want to see you anyway. There we go. <laughs> Come on up here. Oh. I just want to encourage you. You talk about ministries and that, and uh, I don't care who we are, every one of us has the minister of reconciliation. And you have that uh, opportunity Amen. every day of your life. Everywhere you go, everywhere you meet. And I've seen that happen hundreds of times in my work over the years. And they go in there and then walk, walk out of that business with a new brother or sister in Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and and I'm not a preacher. I just I'm just a layman. But uh, I want to encourage you to do that because so many times we hesitate. Well, what if they reject it or this and that? It, that that's not up to us. It's just up to us to share. And when you share the love of Jesus and what He's done for you, uh, they'll receive that. And the Holy Spirit will, the Holy Spirit will prompt you to talk to them. And you don't just go up there while you come to and start it. But when the Holy Spirit moves on you, you'll see them receive that. And uh, I know that in my work, I used to work with our field reps all over the country. And I saw a bunch of our reps come to the Lord. And I see businessmen come to the Lord. And uh, even medical doctors come to Jesus. And then when the door was open, and, I, and I'd say to him, you know something? God knows all about your problem, man. He knows about that. And he's really more concerned about it than you are. What do you mean? And it opened the door and you just see him come to Jesus. Amen. 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 Anybody else have anything you want to say tonight before we're done? So what did we get out of tonight? Anything? What'd you get? Love one another. Love one another. What else did you get? Renew your mind. Renew your mind. Receive what God wants to give you. Receive what God wants to give you. Can you block what God wants to give you? Oh, yeah. You can, you can not take it. I mean, you can, everything you get, you give. Choice. He gives. You choose. You, you take. You choose. <laughs> can I tell you what I saw? Yeah, tell, me, tell us what you saw. Oh, I don't want to go up there. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you got to go back up. got to go back up there. Sorry, girlfriend. Tell us what you saw, Virginia. I can... I don't know how to do it, but I can put a microphone in the center of the room, but we have to deal with feedback. So I can't do that. Oh, excuse me, that was shocking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hold it high enough. This is, I, this, I, gosh, I hope there aren't many people listening to this. No, there are too uh, many. They're right here. Okay. There are too many. Um, it just does. Yeah. You appreciate 3.8. But all of a sudden, I saw, I, what I could see was, it was like a panorama of, of looking across the valleys and, and it, it looked like I was looking towards Kansas into Colorado. And I saw the land rejoicing. And I could, I could hear the land That's rejoicing. Right. You know, I've had, when, when the, the Lord has spoken to me, and you know, and you know, we always say, "Well, it's that still small voice." But there have been times when he has spoken. It's only a couple of times this way, and I was very grateful it was only a couple of times this way because it was like an echo going through my muscles and through my flesh, and I knew it, I knew it was 
father then. And I got to tell you, that time I was terrified. But now, what I'm seeing, what I, what I saw was this great joy. And, and that song went through my mind as it was the Purple Majesty. Mm. Look at Yes. And the land is going to rejoice. Amen. Amen. When the righteous are in power, the people rejoice. Well, rejoice. Amen. 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 Yeah. We've got it. Just keep the pressure on. Amen. 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 Anybody else? You have something that the Lord wants you to say. I think it probably So we're going to pray. Amen. Okay? Amen. Father, we pray right now yes. in Jesus' name. Jesus. Jesus. Ever say in Jesus' name. In Jesus, Jesus' name. name. We thank you. We thank you. That you have surrounded. That you have surrounded. All that are in authority in this land. That are in authority in this land. With multitudes of angels. With multitudes of angels. To protect what God wants done. Satan. Satan. You've been told. You've been told. That you're under our feet. You're under our feet. You're off limits. You're off limits. And you have no place. You have no place. With our government, with our, with our, government, with our land, with, our land, with, with America, with America, or the nation or the of the world. This is not yours, Satan. The world was given to Adam and Eve. The world was given to Adam and Eve. So let go of the people of this world. Let go of the people. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let go. Loose them. Loose them. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we call for laborers. Call it. Oh yes. We say laborers. Laborers. Come forth. Come forth. All throughout the world. All throughout the world. For this revival. For this last move of God, come forth from all parts of the world. Be full of God in Jesus' name. Move with the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to say we're going to pray for the people out there. Father, we pray for everybody that's watching by the internet. Everybody that is oppressed. Yes. Yes, Everybody that has been, that has come on since we began and that's watching. If you're under any kind of oppression, be free right now. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Go free in the name of Jesus. Yes. Satan, take your hands off of every person under the sound of our voices. Yes. In yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Father, we say that your word will not return void. Yes. Everything that was your word that was led of you, Holy Spirit, we say that it will pierce right into the hearts of the people and it will change their lives forever. Yes. Yes. If you're in the local area here, we invite you to come every yes. Sunday. We meet at yes. 6. Yes. We pray, we worship, yes. and we um, get some word, and we do whatever the Holy Spirit says, and people are receiving every kind of thing. People are, are having lives changed. And we want you to know that God loves you. Amen. Cares about everything that yes. you do. Amen. And he's more than enough to meet any need you have. Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. Amen. So everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Be free. Be free. From every oppression. Every oppression. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. From every sickness. Every sickness. COVID. COVID. We demand Amen. that you loose this area. And loose the United States and the nations of the world. In Jesus' name, every weapon that has been formed against the believers worldwide, we call it to the ground. In Jesus' name, that it has no effect, no bad effect. It comes to naught. In Jesus' name. And you say, I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm full of the Holy Ghost and power. I'm on fire for God. I'm on fire for God. I am on fire for God. And I'm not going to get cooled down. And I'm not going to get cooled down. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It was the wheat field.
That's what that's what it was. It was harvest. Harvest. It's going like because you know how Kansas, you know how the wheat, the oh, wheat's yeah. going like this. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's the harvest. So it's joy. It's, it's, the harvest. Harvest. Yeah. it's the harvest. Yeah. Yeah. It's the harvest. It's the harvest. Hallelujah. You you're the one that had the answer on it. I'm going. What am I looking at? If it's the harvest, then Jesus is coming back after the harvest. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. after the now, harvest. if there's anybody that wants prayer after we uh, shut off the internet here, we're going to pray for you. Okay. Amen. Thanks for Amen. joining us. As I said before, if we've already prayed, that we're just going to believe with you and agree with you. But other other than that, you know, we're just going to lay hands on you. Amen. <laughs> Suddenly. Suddenly. Amen. Mike's going to do it. <laughs> no, I'm going to do it.